We're at the cusp of central banks failing because of the margin calls to cover electrical costs. That's how deep this is. And the ECB all trying to run together. I don't know where they're going to get emergency funding. The Bank for International Settlements is going to have to step in to stop this cascade. It's well above the central banking. They're powerless to do in anything, no pun intended on the power thing, but they are powerless to stop this. It's going to have to come to a global order of magnitude of a global currency reset and a global intervention, and you see how they're going to try to flow it in. The glo one global currency, one global government, the one government structure for all the financial system. They're going to try to put it in when this is happening, because that's the only thing that will fix it. And welcome back to Variety on TV, Uncensored. I'm your host, David Dubine, creator of the ADAPT 2030 channel, also right here on Variety on. Now, just before we went on the break, I was talking about this slide here where the Vatican has now instructed all entities under their control to pull all gold, silver, artwork, and anything in terms of what's called liquid assets or financial assets back into the Vatican Bank. Okay. September 30th is your mark on that. But I will present you this slide here, which is a scary one to look at. It's just the base load over, what, since 2014, and it just shows when the high usage of energy is and the low usage of energy. Obviously, in the springtime, you don't need to crank the AC or the heat, so there's a little bit of let off in the uh, side shoulder seasons there. But with everything I was talking about in the first hour of electrical prices, at the minimum that you can find is 10x now. 11x, German pricing at 18 times. Households need to live in one room because they're going to get frozen out. They're paying 20,000 euros a month on electricity in Germany, and they're trying to all come back down into one floor in one room to cut that down to, say, 11,000 euro for the month. Right now. Now, with all these cascading problems, we're so far beyond even repairing this, it's more of a brace for impact and Christmas is canceled. Santa's going to need to bring a high tension tower in the back of the sled and plug one in for you. What we're looking at here is the base load that is the highest usage. And each of these yellow squares that I put on there are when they come into the high season for electrical demand. And lo and behold, it begins November 1st. Now, how convenient is that for the Vatican to pull all their gold and silver and financial instruments back under house, firewalled from the rest of the financial system? And if you think electric prices at 10x, 15x, 18x are occurring now at the low shoulder season coming out of summer, this next month, look where it goes from there. Every single December and January is a mega spike in each of the yellow boxes. This is the end of the financial system in Europe as we know it, whether it be on the 30th occurring or shortly thereafter in November and December. It's one of these, you got a, a very short 60-day window for the collapse to... History is being made. Thanks to a new study, there's strong evidence to suggest collagen is one of the best supplements in the world to help reduce the appearance of skin aging. Researchers found the supplement helped improve the skin's elasticity and hydration of over 1,100 people. Based on the results, researchers concluded collagen was effective, reducing signs of skin aging like wrinkles. That's why I've been using one of the best collagen powders on the market, containing five critically important types of collagen your skin needs to help rejuvenate its elasticity. Unlock your secret to healthy aging with this collagen powder. Health with Adapt 2030 is notorious for selling out. And as the making of this video, back in stock, take 51% off your order. Free shipping, 60-day money-back guarantee. Healthwithadapt2030.com. Click on that link in the description box below. And now on with the video. I don't know how fast it's going to go at that point. But once the markets have locked up and all factories uh, have ceased operation and the valuations try to come in on quarter at the end of quarter three or quarter four, it's just 
the entire financial system is going to implode because the derivatives are all tied back into this electrical market and those are spun out across every market on the planet. No way to bring those back in. The full collapse of the economy, but it needs to be done to bring in the new system with central bank digital currencies, personal allocation, carbon credits, and track and trace every penny that you're going to spend with your universal basic income. It needs to get destroyed to this point where the biggest collapse since the Roman Empire needs to occur to bring this system in of total control of monies. And if you say the wrong thing, they're going to turn off your money. They're going to turn off your ability to transact. But the collapse needs to be so all-encompassing and so vast and so terrifying that you'll take any solution. It's a planned collapse. As we move forward, you know, go, go step back a couple. Let's go, you go back, what, a month on this? Uh, a month and a half. The electricity pricing was already creeping up to German power prices at 700 euros a kilowatt, and then it went to 840 euros per kilowatt on the right side and this is like weak jumps and even in a single day you got electrical prices jumping 25 percent this is hyperinflation no different than Zimbabwe or Venezuela you cannot tell me that something increasing 10 or 20 times in its price in a matter of months is not hyperinflation you can try to repackage that all you want and use all these descriptive adjectives and 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 try to play it off like oh uh, there's a benchmark on this one that's not being met no you're in hyperinflation pure and simple. And if we look at the German prices compared to the French prices, it's jumped again. When does it stop is the question. My answer is it won't. It's going to go rolling in through the high season of demand. And unless electricity is free and every country in the EU goes into full, I wouldn't even say quantitative easing, it would be more like every bit of value that a government can muster to push into the power sector to start the economy again and get angry and hungry and cold people off the streets. You know, it is a full collapse. Now, I doubt they're going to stop it because I, I'm more on the leaning to the side that they need the collapse to bring in this new system. It's purposeful. Like, look at the Black Sea. You know, me more into the crop space. That was the perfect place to target. Laser precision to cause the most damage to the entire export market of global grains and you cut off the fertilizer and the shipping routes and you divested countries that are now spinning off to start their own gold standard. It, it couldn't have been more perfectly planned because Kazakhstan wouldn't have done it. Ukraine was the perfect place to destroy the grains market and take 30 million tons off the market in addition to upsetting all the 15 million tons that was exported to nations that are dependent on imports way developing nations would get their grains from Ukraine. Now that set that into a full cascade of collapse down there too. Any place you look, it's purposeful. And here's the UK, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave the UK out. Want to make you feel wanted, don't get jealous UK, I got you right here. Look at the price spikes here also. Going up around 600 pounds a megawatt. One, and, and the averages over the you know, 2010 until this spike started in you know, mid 2020, beginning of 2021, it was down around 35 to 50. And now you're at 600. That's a 12x increase. It's happening everywhere. There's no place that's not immune from this. Now, here in the States, I'm wondering how it's going to cascade or trip over here. It's going to. It's meant to. And this is where we come into how do you protect yourself. Because as we see it right now, currently, there is no longer a functional market in Europe that is bidding price for electricity. The margin calls have wiped out barely. At, we're at the cusp of central banks failing because of the margin calls to cover electrical costs. That's how deep this is. And the ECB all trying to run together. I don't know where they're going to get emergency funding. The Bank for International Settlements is going to have to step in to stop this cascade. It's well above the central banking. They're powerless to do in anything. No pun intended on the power thing. But they are powerless to stop this. It's going to have to come to a global order of magnitude, of a global currency reset, and a global intervention. And you see how they're going to try to flow it in. The glo one global currency, one global government, the one government structure for all the financial system. They're going to try to put it in when this is happening. Because that's the only thing that will fix it. It's coming to this level above, extra governmental, above into the Bank for International Settlements. is the only institution that has that much sway and power that could bail 
the governments and the corporations out at the same time. No other institution can do that. This is a perfect example here. Unipeer, they got a margin call for $4 billion last week. And then because prices skyrocketed again into the 18x for the German firm here, they were asked to cover another $9 billion. So their margin calls are actually more than the valuation of the company. See, you're getting to this thing. You can't keep operating at that point. This is a perfect example of what's happening. I, I only highlight this one because the numbers are so clean that it, their margin calls are more than the, the stock price valuation of this company. This is happening to every single company in Europe at the moment. Large, small, medium, all of it, all occurring at the same time. How does this get bailed out is the question. Margin calls are the driving the trading now. And you can follow the bullet points here. There's very little liquidity. Everybody's pulled from their emergency funds at, the, at even the central bank level. They're cleaned out, literally. Because every company that was operating asked for an emergency loan to cover for the margin calls on the electric. It's drained the system to the point there's no liquidity. If you thought that, you know, back in 2019, the overnight lending rate, the repo market was going into bankruptcy and that's, banks didn't trust banks. There were, the liquidity literally dried up out of the system. We're seeing it again in real time right here. Every single day, these electric prices are ticking more. And even stated here, 24 to 48 hours of liquidity is what they have left unless some other larger institution steps in. And it sure isn't going to be the Fed to come to the rescue on that. We're talking global monetary system reset help on this one. And they're even at the point now where they want to suspend trading on it and completely do away with the forward electric market and go to sort of a cash basis market. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that. When you're trying to you know, buy electricity three months out, two months out, a year out, how do you do that with cash? The whole reason for the futures market in the beginning was to protect farmers. In case the crop prices dropped significantly, they could have a bunch of puts out there and still make the money, physical money, so they wouldn't get bankrupted and lose their farms. On the inverse, they can go long too. They can make money either way. It was a protection hedge for farmers originally on the commodities market. Now it's spun off into everything and everybody, the traders are taking advantage of it. You've got to realize on these contracts here, they're moving on one cent pips. On a 24 hours times how many hours is your contract on a one cent move? They're moving like 15,000 cents. You realize how many hundreds of billions of dollars have been made in the last few weeks or months on people trading one cent on these exposure to the electrical markets? Well, now they want to do the same. What if it falls? Well, somebody's got to cover that, and this is where we get into the all out destruction. Well, they're calling for the suspension of markets, just like they did with the nickel trades. It went from 3,000 to 125,000. Oh, we need to suspend that market, pull back every trade. So can you imagine if they're doing the same thing with the electrical market? And here's where it gets a little worrisome. The nickel debacle that occurred at the London Metals Exchange nearly took down the financial system in England. This is the entire system that powers Europe from the household level to the warehouse storage level to the production level, the factory level, the municipality and city level. The orders of magnitude are thousands of, of times in excess of what the nickel market was that was about to crash markets. Effects of what's going to happen if you're taking away all electricity out of Europe. Power prices surging, and it's just going to continue. Nobody knows when it's going to stop. Now here's the thing. France used to be a power exporter. And because the, the prices have gone so high and they're having breakdown after breakdown in their nuclear plants, they now need to import power. That's the same thing with happening with the grain trades, Paraguay. They were an, a net soybean exporter, but this year they had such gargantuan losses from the volcanic ash swirling after the Tonga eruption that they're now net soybean importers. And we see a lot of this with the grain trades. So those companies and countries that can't import any longer, they need to go to another place to look for it. Well, France, everybody used to look for France for electricity because they would be the exporter. Now France is looking for power. Crazy. And again, you know, the, the Pope, or the, you know, putting out the decree here, all intertwined with the Swiss financial banks, Luxembourg and London, like, everybody knows it's going to crash except, well, the people out here on the streets. What are they going to say? Oh, sorry, we didn't know. 
too bad. Time for you to grow your own food. Because, uh, you know, I've had a lot. I, thank you for all the comments that people leave below in the videos. I did listen to you, and somebody's like, well, you always talk about the problem. Why don't you talk about a solution for a minute? Okay. We're coming into autumn and winter. So what types of food do you to save yourself money and have leafy green vegetables and different nutrient-dense foods coming in? Types of beans, like snow peas and beans, any types of beans, black-eyed peas, fava beans, yellow peas, all these are great. That you just need a trellis on them, use a fence line, into the shoulder season where it gets cool enough where the insects aren't going to damage your food. You're going to get pretty good production out of that. And the cabbage, of course. Any types of lettuces, uh, butternut lettuce, butter squash lettuce, any of these types, of lettuce, those will grow great. They like cooler temperatures anyway. Uh, spinaches, chard, if you like that earthy flavor, that, that's, that vegetable's for you. But the beets, and the radishes, you know, you can eat the leaves when those are growing. If you eat the smallest of leaves that are coming out of the center there, uh, you can get a small leafy green, super incredibly densely packed with micronutrients that you would need and vitamins. So this is the thing. Through history, every single food shortage is accompanied by people's bodies, their minds don't function correctly. And there's a, ma a mass amount of disease that sweeps through because their immune systems are so depleted. You can't just eat rice and beans and survive. You need other greens coming in to get, like I say, micronutrients. So the beets can also be, if you grow sugar beet, you can get a sugar source out of that too. These are my 12 here to move to if we're going to go to an autumn garden, and I think you should consider that to grow your own food immediately. Do not experiment. Go right into full production if you can. I'm wondering how this will affect uh, the United States supermarket chains. And also, you know, at the same time we're growing veg for eating, we've got to think about herbs. And herbs are great for seasoning your foods, but also look at the therapeutic benefits for each one of these. Again, you're trying to target something to keep your body optimally functioning if you don't have the regular food sources coming in. Digestive aids. You're going to be eating some off foods during this time, so, you know, you might get the grumbly belly or... And these are really easy to grow as well. And with cooler temperatures coming in, they generally do pretty well. And you're going to have to work through many an obstacle as we progress from here to there. Because this electrical collapse coming in Europe. Like, see, the, US, or the FDA and the USDA in, in the United States are running in conjunction knowing that food is going to be less available. And it's going to get into the hyperinflationary spikes as well. So we're seeing it with the electric first. Food is going to follow this. And the FDA is front-running it, saying, hey, you can change your ingredients without needing to change the label. They call it minor formulation changes. So if it's a red dye number five, you can substitute a red dye number three. If it's a cottonseed oil, you can switch it with a canola oil or some other types of oils. You don't even need to mark it on the packaging anymore, so buyer beware. They're front-running it, knowing that these changes are going to come so quickly that companies are going to have a tough time keeping up. And if you notice recently, if you've bought any foods, the texture's different, the taste might be different because they're substituting ingredient. <clears throat> and with the food, for the last couple minutes that we have here, thank you for staying with me here on Bright Tea on TV to talk about these important issues. And Mike, thanks for having the venue so we can speak openly about this. The Pro Farmer just came through with their crop tour estimates. You know, the USDA and its rosy forecast, you knew that wasn't going to be correct. I mean, they have the biggest longest running drought in some time out west and they were still calling record production shaking my head that's just market manipulation at its highest level still allowed in open sight to be gotten away with so the pro farmer they only go through these states here now you know there are other states in america that grow corn but this is what's considered the corn belt so they ran through these states and we have some totals here i'll try to dig out what are they seeing in the fields that don't have enough moisture or fertilizer, by the way. This type of yield. It might be bushels that are counted, but this is the kind of scrappy corn that that bushel is going to be comprised of. The kernels coming out of this are going to look something of this type of ear. Nothing like we've seen in the past. And as an example, out in Nebraska, they're at the very west tailing edge of the drought. They're at 133 bushels per acre. And you might not know what that means, but the average per year is around 182 bushels per acre. So they're down 50 bushels per acre at, at leading in from the western drought side. 
Now what the USDA says is something different, the, the Pro Farm Tour here. So they're coming up with the final numbers. Now the USDA is in the small number below the larger numbers. And these numbers shall continue to fall as they start to get harvest from Texas, Oklahoma, and other areas that are really stricken by drought, uh, parts of Colorado, for example. The numbers that are seen here are going to change also. This is just a preliminary estimate of what's happening. Pro Farmer was going to downgrade that anyway, so they're looking at at least a billion or 1.1 billion bushels less off the mark bad forecasting. Thanks, USDA. I can plan for my food purchases because of your forecast. Not. And they're putting it, they were saying across America pretty much can be 175 bushels per acre. Nope, they're coming in at 168. And I've seen numbers even as low as like 158, 160, 161. These numbers are going to come down further. So here's an interesting chart that came out. The crop tours begin, and look how the corn price has gone up. Generally, during this harvest season, prices crash. There's an abundance of, not this year though. Which brings me into the Chicago Board of Trade is going to need to facilitate physical delivery to those traders holding contracts that have pledged to stand for delivery on the 16th of this month in September. Now there's more contracts being held than ever recorded of people who say, give me the physical, because it's going to be worth more than the money it will, because you have the physical. And at the same time, the railroad's going to go on strike on the 16th because their cool off arbitration month of that time period they had to wait. And still 90% of the rail workers have voted to continue to go on strike. The same day they're supposed to deliver the corn to the largest amount of corn contract holders in history of trading. And we got the electricity collapse. Too many things are happening at the same time here for it to be a coincidence. Seems like it's a, a rug pull, for a better term. So I do wish you the best of luck in your preparations. I'm preparing as well because it seems like we are at the beginning of the collapse. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you next week.